Well, hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> My name is Shay Too Sweet. You can call me Shay for short. Today, we still have on this Wonder Woman cosplay because I was supposed to be filming a certain video, but it's being re edited. So, I am going to be doing uh, the SpongeBob conspiracy theory number three. I'll be a residential black friend talking through the whole entire thing. Hey, look, look. So let's go ahead and jump into it before this video starts. Uh, save as the last thing. Uh, can we get can we get 200 likes on this one? Cause I, I do a lot of editing. So can we get 200 likes uh, for the next one? And here at Shade Too Sweet Incorporated, we defend all villains, especially if Shade Too Sweet thinks think uh they are hot now this is this is just a proprietor this is just a proprietary warning just in case if there's nothing for me to defend against or if mrs pup is completely um just dog water anyway so let's go ahead and jump into it mm. this is not mrs puff you may think she's just spongebob's boating teacher but you'd be very very wrong for years she's been running from her dark and mysterious past but it's finally caught up to her and behind it all is a mastermind who's been secretly controlling her life and psychologically torturing her if you guys thought my last two theories were mind-blowing get ready for my biggest conspiracy yet this is the mrs puff theory Okay. I gotta start off by saying, wow, the reaction to my last two Spongebob theories has been insane. How does she know? How does she know? Squilliam, you lying, deceiving, who is that handsome young devil? <laughs> I'm glad you guys are enjoying my ridiculously deep dives into the show. I mean, I have to watch so much Spongebob and read so much of the Wikipedia to put these theories together. I love but the it's worth it because the writers actually take the time to set these things up. Now, a lot of people have been asking, Alex, how do you come up with these crazy conspiracy theories? Well, I always start these theories by looking for the moments in the show that seem to be implying more than they're letting on. Like I've said before, Spongebob is a weird show with lots of abstract humor, but I can usually understand the intent the writers had behind a weird joke. But then there's stuff like this. I hope I still remember how to do this. <laughs> yeah. And it's so confusing and weird that it feels like the writers are trying to imply something beyond just weirdness for the sake of comedy. And nowhere in the show is there more of these moments than with Mrs. Puff. And once I started looking into it, it led me down the deepest rabbit hole I've ever seen from this show. So, let's begin. I ain't got that guilt money, I'll give a fuck. Mrs. Puff start past. Okay, let's see. Mrs. Puff is a boating school teacher in Bikini Bottom. She's okay. passed all of her students except for one, SpongeBob SquarePants. He's taken her driver's test hundreds of times and he always ends up failing it and causing destruction and chaos that usually ends up with Mrs. Puff going to jail, despite it not really being her fault. We also know that she was once married, but her husband was killed by fishermen. That's my teacher, Mrs. Puff. Mrs. Puff? Oh, she's married. Oh no, Mr. Krabs, she's single. Then what happened to Mr. Puff? He dead! She doesn't like to talk about it. Throughout the show, there are moments like this that seem to be hinting at her having a dark, mysterious past. And in Season 2, Episode 10, No Free Rides, we get the biggest clue about who Mrs. Puff really is. After Spongebob fails the driving test yet again, Mrs. Puff has just had it with him and ends up just giving up and giving him his license even though he never really passed. She quickly realizes that this is a horrible idea and he'll probably end up destroying the entire town. So much destruction. This reporter asks, why? Local consensus places the blame on this negligent, selfish driving instructor who- He dead! Remember this clip, because it's going to be very important later on. And then she says this insanely revealing line. What have I done? Everyone will know that I let him slide through school. I'll have to move to a new city, start a new boating school with a new name! No. Not again. No, not again. Come on, it's like they're just begging someone to make a theory about this. Uh, hearsay. Um, my client, my client just says no, not again. Maybe what she was implying with is she doesn't want to go through the regulatory laws that that other places have. Maybe Bikini Bottom was more more fit for her 
to actually make a boating school it all depends on the laws of that land maybe it's going to take her a long time to, for her to get reestablished and everything else maybe that's what she was hinting at not saying that she did something like this at another boating school she could possibly just want to just want to pick up and move it does not imply that her students were that bad okay so we now know Mrs. Puff was originally from a different town. Yes. She used to own a different boating school, mm -hmm. and Mrs. Puff isn't even her real name. There's something in her past that she ran away from. Now, there's been some debate over whether she's actually referring to a new name for herself or for her boating school, but I do think she's talking about her own name. Because if she's trying to run away from something in her past, she wouldn't start a new boating school with her real name in the title. Now, when she says again, I don't think she's just referring to starting a new life. Everyone will know that I let him slide through school. Not again. I think at her previous boating school, she had a terrible student just like Spongebob, who she prematurely gave a license to, and it led to something so terrible happening that she had to run away and start a whole new life. In Season 3, Episode 5, Doing Time, we get a flashback to when she first opened up the school. <laughs> of my new boating school, I pledge that as long as a student is willing to learn, I shall never give up. Hi, I'm SpongeBob SquarePants. With the opening of this new boating school, let's keep in mind that this is not her first boating school. Maybe the whole reason she's making this pledge now at her second school is because she gave up on a student at her previous school and that led to her having to run away and start a new life. She's pledging to never make the same mistake again. Now let's skip a hearsay hearsay um she's probably pledging because like i was like certain times in certain places you can't you can't do anything else with a certain student so you don't give up you just you basically say that they just have to go to another another fuck them kids another school and and if they and if they decided to pass that student if they decided to pass that student, that does not fall on her. That falls on the other, the other uh, school. But my my client has so much compassion that she still felt guilty, even though, in the eyes of the law, after you after you give that responsibility to another uh, school, they will be at all. They would be liable. But but as we can clearly tell, SpongeBob is over the age of 18 and everything else. Probably the other student was over the age of 18. And if they decided to commit vehicular homicide, that is not on Mrs. Puff. That is on the person that is driving. Ahead to one of the newer episodes, season 12, episode 21, Lighthouse Louie, where Mrs. Puff has SpongeBob organize all the stuff she keeps in the school's lighthouse. There's lots of interesting things hidden in the background, but the first thing that caught my eye was this file labeled Mrs. Puff. It makes sense for a teacher to have files on all their students, but why would she have a file about herself? But let's remember, she's not Mrs. Puff. That's a fake identity she created. And I'm willing to bet Here's all of her fake identification documents are in this file. Back in No Free Here's Rhymes, that. she just gives Spongebob a license that she already had for him. So she clearly makes these licenses and would probably know how to make fake identifications. Here's but that's that. not the only hint about Mrs. Puff's past in this lighthouse. There is something in here that directly confirms all of this. As Spongebob swallows all of Mrs. Puff's junk, we see something very interesting for only a few frames. Deranged boat teacher makes getaway. Ten seasons later and the creators are still hiding stuff about Mrs. Puff fleeing her old life. It might not look like it at first, but we actually get a ton of new information. Deranged by a deranged boat teacher district authorities with, with balloon animals. Mm. Uh, no, um, nothing on this one, D fake news, sorry, um, this could be just very inflammatory of my client, there you go, very inflammatory, deranged, uh, deranged, it doesn't, it does not give any context to it, and the fine print is blotted out, so I don't, I can't make heads or tails of this, this doesn't make any sense, and then the next thing, the next thing around, around this is the fact that a matter if somebody calling my client a big meanie are we just going to skip over that if we're going to take every piece of evidence into account my client was uh there was somebody bullying my client so maybe maybe the person that called my client a big meanie 
was the same person when these small notes didn't get to her may have known someone who worked at the new uh kelp post and then they posted this derogatory thing about her we don't know we have no idea from this newspaper. This is from the New Kelp Post, which tells us Mrs. Puff originally lived in New Kelp City. Then there's a caption that reads, distracts authorities with balloon animals. And do you remember that clip from the beginning? I hope I still remember how to do this. Yeah. So whenever Mrs. Puff makes a getaway or commits a crime, she leaves behind a balloon animal to distract the police. I'm telling you guys, these writers don't just do stuff randomly, they have reasons for everything. And the most damning piece of evidence from this newspaper is actually the picture of Mrs. Puff. Kind of a strange photo, right? We have seen this exact same photo of her before. In the episode No Free Rides, when she imagines what would happen if Spongebob got his license. Local consensus places the blame on this negligent, selfish driving instructor. This means that this isn't just her imagination of what might happen. This is also her remembering what happened when she lived in New Kelp City and prematurely gave one of her students a license. And I'm willing to bet that the fish reporting the news is the exact same one who reported about her in New Kelp City. Let me explain. We know from the episode Whatever Happened to Spongebob that reporters from the Bikini Bottom News can also work for the New Kelp City News. But the real reason I think this is because of his hair. In the entire show, we have never seen this fish reporter with hair before. Why would the creators go out of their way to add that detail? Because Mrs. Puff isn't imagining him as he looks now. She's remembering him from years ago when he used to have hair when he reported about her in New Kelp City. Mrs. Puff has been running from her past ever since and is now forced to relive her experience with an unteachable student through Spongebob. Bob, but reliving this trauma has pushed her to the point of complete insanity. And trust me when I say that you have no idea how delusional she actually is. Uh, hearsay. Hearsay. We don't, we don't really, uh, I mean, you just can't call somebody, I mean, delusional. You have to lay down a foundation evidence and then keep going from there. I mean, as of right now, as of right now, only thing that we know, only thing that we know certain about Mrs. Puff is someone wrote an article about her in the Kelp Times. She owned another boating school that she, that she moved from another place to another place. Does that make it bad that she wanted to move? Anybody can move. It doesn't, it doesn't make her guilty. That, those are the only facts that we have. Everything else is inflammatory. Like, everything else is basically hearsay. Only thing that we know for certain is that she likes to make balloon animals, clowns. She had a boating school prior. She could have just moved and everything else. She had an unruly student that she couldn't help. And, and... We don't know any other backstory, okay? So let's keep it on the facts, okay? Guilty until proven, no, innocent until proven guilty. Oh, God damn it. Okay, that's how we work here. Another running gag throughout the series is Mrs. Puff's occasional nervous breakdowns or moments of insanity because of Spongebob, and they get more severe as the show continues. At first, she did care for Spongebob, but in the newer episodes, she literally tries to kill Spongebob just to get him out of her life. Even Spongebob just walking up to her gives her severe PTSD. Hi, Mrs. Puff. <gasps> ah! Hit the brakes! Spongebob! Uh, watch the tree! Laugh! Wait, Mrs. Puff! driving but these mostly seem like just one-off moments and for the most part mrs puff is still a functioning member of society right i'm going to show you that she's actually much much more insane and delusional than you may think and some of the episodes she's in take place entirely in her own head if we're talking about how insane mrs puff is there is no better place to start than the episode doing time once again spongebob fails the boating test and causes destruction and chaos which leads to mrs puff going to jail spongebob keeps breaking into jail to try and bust her out but mrs puff actually prefers being in jail over teaching him we actually get another interesting line about mrs puff's past in this episode okay you can do this puff you can get through this without losing your sanity oh that's a road we don't want to go down again so we know that mrs puff has lost her sanity in the past probably from her previous terrible student but it seems like she's recovered since then except in this episode she has a complete mental breakdown sponge oh god damn it bob keeps appearing in impossible places until she gets thrown into solitary confinement where each wall of the room transforms into a giant spongebob face and then the episode ends in a way that's so weird and confusing that it rivals the infamous gorilla episode 
episode ending. As Mrs. Puff freaks out, she's suddenly transported back into the beginning of the episode when Spongebob was taking the test. Except this time, Spongebob gets arrested instead of her. Help! Help! No! This is not a good time! No! I can't believe it! It was all a dream! I'm not going to jail! Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. So what's really going on in this episode? Was the ending all in her head? Is Mrs. Puff just caught in an endless loop? I think this entire episode is inside of Mrs. Puff's head, and she's actually on the outside the whole time, but she's been imagining herself inside of prison. I can explain. Listen closely to what the police officer tells Mrs. Puff. I'm not going to jail! Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. And then revealing she's still in a prison uniform despite being on the outside. So, this scene is obviously inside of her head, which means everything we see is symbolic. And if we can understand the symbolism of it, we can understand what's really going on with Mrs. Puff. Notice how she's suddenly wearing a black and white striped prison uniform, even though the entire episode she's been wearing this orange jumpsuit. Why would the creators go to the extra effort to draw a whole new prison uniform mm. for her? Well, We've seen her wear this black and white prison uniform before, the very first time she went to prison back in Season 1, Episode 7, Hall Monitor. So when the police officer says, you've already done your time, he's referring to the first time she went to jail. But why is she still wearing that uniform outside of prison? Well, she may have gotten out of jail, but she was by no means free. Having to teach Spongebob is a prison in itself, and she manifests that by believing she's in jail and wearing a prison uniform despite being on the outside. This entire episode, every time Spongebob magically appears, Peers is all inside of her head. She is completely delusional, and hints that she's experiencing these hallucinations don't stop there. Just six episodes later, she goes to a house party Spongebob throws, and while everyone is talking and having a good time, in the background we see she's literally sitting by herself talking to an ice sculpture of Spongebob. You can't tell me this isn't intentional, I mean look at this. <laughs> now back in the episode No Free Rides, there is a very strange picture inside of Mrs. Puff's home. It's a picture of Mrs. Puff inside of a picture of Mrs. Puff inside of a picture of Mrs. Puff creating an infinite loop. This is something that has confused Spongebob fans for years. But like everything in the show, there is a reason for it being there. One of the Spongebob storyboard artists actually called it the biggest mystery in the entire show. If you think about it, this is just like the end of Doing Time, where she's stuck in an infinite loop of Spongebob failing the driving test. Because it's all symbolic of what her life is, just an endless cycle of Spongebob taking the test and failing, and no matter what she does to try and escape, she always ends up back in the same place at the end of the episode. So this picture is another symbolic manifestation of what she's feeling. We even see another one of these pictures all the way in Season 9, Episode 5, Bumper to Bumper. This is something that the show is consistently Holy alluding shit. to. Mrs. Puff is an unreliable narrator, and anything we see with her could potentially all be inside of her own head. In fact, I believe I found another episode that takes place inside of her head. In season 9- mm. Well, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 Defense lawyer Shay is still here, but um, it it sounds like the true culprit is Spongebob. This, this poor woman- <laughs> This poor woman got PTSD like a motherfucking like- <laughs> Like, like at the beginning, at the beginning, you know, you guys, like, I was like, yeah, hearsay, this is bullshit, this, I feel bad for Mrs. Puff, I'm just saying, god damn. Like, just kill Spongebob already, damn. In episode 17, Spongebob Long Pants, Spongebob goes to a different boating instructor and actually gets his license. But as soon as he does, we briefly cut to Mrs. Puff waking up. You pass. I my driver's license! Oh, oh. Lock your doors! Bar your windows! It's the end of the world! Now, this seems like it's probably just a throwaway gag where Mrs. Puff somehow mm -hmm. senses that Spongebob got his license and it causes her to wake up and freak out. You know, it's a good bit, it's funny, but I have a question. If the joke is that she's supposed to be waking up at the exact time Spongebob gets his license, how come she wakes up at night Sorry. when Spongebob <laughs> clearly gets his license during the day? Because uh. this entire episode actually takes place inside of Mrs. Puff's head. And this is the only part of the episode in the real world. I don't know what that was all about, but 
I'm glad it's over. But let me pause for a second. I'm sure some of you are already wondering if this contradicts my previous Spongebob video, The Television Theory. If you haven't watched that one, the gist of it is that the entire show is a documentary television show, and everything we see is actually being secretly filmed by scuba divers. And there's a ton of evidence to support it. I'm very proud of that video. You should definitely check it out. But if everything's supposed to be from a camera, then how are we seeing things from inside Mrs. Puff's head? In fact, how do we see dreams and flashbacks and thought bubbles? Well, I think the simple answer is that even though we viewed the show through an objective camera lens, the world itself still follows the rules of a cartoon. You can never tell another living soul. Wait, wait, hold on! What's that? My pen is out of ink. Plankton! <laughs> You'll never get me formula, not even in a flashback. In the world of Spongebob, you can imagine something and other people can still see, record, or interact with it because that's just how cartoons work. Back to the theory, we know that her insanity has caused her to live a life of delusion, but if you remember back to the Lighthouse episode, she's also become an extreme hoarder. And looking at her collection of junk is like a look directly into her mind, so there's gotta be something we can learn about her from it. There's a picture of her boyfriend, Mr. Krabs, the hall monitor belt she gives her students, the mean drawings her students make her, Spongebob's diary, a boating safety helmet. Wait, mm -hmm. Spongebob's diary? Why does she have Spongebob's diary? The last time we saw that, it was safely put away in Spongebob's library. What's it doing in her lighthouse? And why does she have Squidward's painting? and a table from the Krusty Krab, and Spongebob's bike, and Squidward's teddy bear, and the hair curlers Mr. Krabs had, and that statue of Squidward, and that diamond ring, and that crown, and that bucket of radioactive waste, and that jellyfish sign? Oh my god. She's a klepto? Mrs. Puff is a kleptomaniac. <gasps> Mrs. Puff has been stealing from- <gasps> I just like she's a klepto- Hearsay! <laughs> god damn it! She stole my client! She didn't steal that, she acquired it! <laughs> Yep, that's what I'm gonna go with. She, were, she acquired it. Everyone in Bikini Bottom. I can even prove that her pet snail from Season 3, Episode 19 was stolen. My snail is up a tree. I've had her since I was a little girl. No! Hmm, you've had that snail since you've been a little girl, huh? Then how come that is the exact same snail Squidward had four episodes ago in the Great Snail Race? I wouldn't let Snally here play with that mongrel muck. She's a purebred. See, she even has her own papers. He even has her paperwork. Mrs. Puff clearly stole the snail from Squidward. But why the hell would Mrs. Puff steal all this other junk? What possible use could she have for any of it? We could find the answer to that question by looking at this green hat and this purple jacket. That's These all. were gifts Mr. Krabs bought her on their first date, but she ended up feeling uncomfortable receiving them and gave them back to him. I'm afraid I just don't feel comfortable accepting all these gifts. Except apparently she's not too uncomfortable to steal them back afterwards. Um, so clearly Mrs. Puff isn't stealing this stuff because she wants to use- Here, her, hearsay. Hearsay. Golly. Gotta get my bears back. Hearsay. Oh, I mean, may, maybe, maybe, maybe I cannot explain. Yes, I can. I can explain away everything. She acquired most of this stuff by just, by just um, garage sales. Garage sales. There you go. And, and the next thing is, if it's a Mr. Krabs, if they're still dating, then he probably eased the gifts onto her rather than just all at one time. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's certain people, like, I love gifts. I, gifts are my shit. I, I, I'll take a gift so quickly. I love gifts. But I also know people who do not like gifts at all. As in, like, if you give them more than, like, three gifts for their birthday, they're having a mental breakdown because they are not gift getters. They, like, you got to give them gifts, like, maybe once in a while and, like, slowly ease them in. Me, bruh, give me gifts. I love them. You know what I'm saying? Shit. I take gifts. I take sponsorship. I take cosplay. I take anything. I love me some gifts, okay? But people have different love languages and everything else. Now, I just have to explain away all the rest of that shit. Uh, the Krusty Krab table, her, she probably told Mr. Krab that she needed a table, got that from the Krusty Krab. And the rest of this is from... She just steals for the thrill of it. Maybe stealing things is her way of coping with the insanity of her everyday life. And remember, this isn't the first time she's gone insane. You can get through this without losing your sanity. Oh, that's a road we don't want to go down again. In fact, I have reason to believe that she started stealing things way back whenever she first went insane. 
I hope I still remember how to do this. I don't think she's just talking about remembering how to make balloon animals. She's probably also referring to remembering how to steal a boat. And if that's not enough for you, in a Spongebob comic book, she actually admits that she used to rob banks, and she wears the exact same ski mask. Mrs. Puff lives a completely delusional and miserable life, all because she has to teach Spongebob how to drive. It's led her to steal from the people she cares about, and completely disassociate from reality. But... That begs a very important question. If Spongebob is causing her life to be so miserable, then why does she even keep teaching him? After all the destruction and pain he's caused, she'd totally be justified to expel him, right? I See, was it, was it, um, was it Munchausen by, no, that's Munchausen by proxy, no, that's when you claim somebody else is sick. No, Stockholm Syndrome? Like, guess that. That's the only thing I could come up with, cause I don't know. Look, I don't know why my client keep this keep this guy around. I have no idea. But only thing I can be like, maybe she's used to that amount of pain. Maybe she's a what? As no, a sadist is the person that a sadist is the person a masochist. Masochist, uh, because say the masochist, maybe, maybe, maybe she, maybe she likes the pain inflicted on her. Masochist, masochist, or Stockholm. She will literally try and kill him so she doesn't have to teach him, but for some reason she can't just expel him. It's almost like there's someone forcing her to teach SpongeBob. Oh, they went that way. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought we were gonna go the other way, but they went that way. Back to the episode No Free Rides, after prematurely giving Spongebob a license, she steals his boatmobile so he can't hurt anyone. In the end, this causes her to get arrested and go to jail, but then Spongebob tells her this. And besides, the warden says she'll let you go early, if you do her a favor. What's that? Free driving lessons! She'll get to leave prison early if she gives free driving lessons. That seems like an oddly specific requirement. And that's not the only time this gets mentioned either. In Season 9, Episode 5, Bumper to Bumper, we get this scene. If only Spongebob could pass his boating test, he'd be out of my life once and for all. Unfortunately, I keep getting reminded of the consequences if I get too angry with the little nuisance. Consequences. Are you telling me that if she refuses to teach Spongebob specifically, she'll be violating her parole and get sent back to jail? What? Uh, uh, Shay, don't dork out on this. I promise I won't because you'll... Okay, so let's just, let's be honest and serious. Let me just be honest and serious. Okay, so the way that certain things happen in the criminal justice system, you can't, if you are on parole, you can't go to a county jail, but normally if you violate your parole, the parole board will send you to prison, not keep you in jail. Because jail is normally for people that are not planning on staying there for that long. That's why a lot of people, when they go to jail, when you versus probation versus a uh, parole a lot of people when they go on parole or or on the probation they get months so you and blah 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 i get it if if i was hurt if i was going to be on parole and, and there's no way for me to ever get off a of parole unless if i teach him how to drive and everything else as somebody as somebody i would kill him kill it like the rest I would, I would kill him. Why? Why would I constantly torture myself with this, with this dumbass? Like, I would kill him. I'll kill him! I'll kill him! Why does the prison even care if Mrs. Puff teaches Spongebob? Is it just part of some weird community service? But mm. things start to get really suspicious at the end of Season 7, Episode 5, Summer Job. Once again, Mrs. Puff ends up in jail, but this time she's forced to go to a prison boating school. Oh, wow! A driver's education class! Good day, class! Ah! Uh, I must be having a nightmare! What's he doing here? Uh. Dear Mrs. Puff, I'm following in your footsteps and got a job as a driver's ed teacher for the summer. Yeah! Who in their right mind would hire Spongebob to do this after he's literally destroyed the city countless times while driving? Is this just another one of Mrs. Puff's delusions? Or is the prison intentionally forcing her to be around Spongebob just to torture her? I mean, look at the way the guard forces her to sit there and listen to him. Get me out of here! 
And look at that evil smile he has as he watches her endure this torture. There is something very strange going on with this prison. Then, oh, in Season shit. 10, Episode 8, The Getaway, Mrs. Puff meets a criminal named Dorsal Dan and starts to get romantic feelings for him. This is also while she's still dating Mr. Krabs. Shame on you, Mrs. Puff. At the end of the- Bust down, Tatiana. Let me see you bust down. <laughs> hey. So they both accidentally land in prison, and the warden puts him in solitary confinement. Warden, I found this one pulling up outside the prison. Dorsal Dan, a notorious getaway driver. Toss him the clink. I'll wait for you, my little tender boy. <laughs> In or out of jail, this prison will stop at nothing to make sure she is alone and miserable. But why? Who's behind all of this? Why would but anyone care this much about torturing Mrs. Puff? Who's the mastermind pulling the strings? I don't know. I ain't never seen this before. I'm still defending Mrs. Puff here. I think it's the... I think... I think it's the people at the town that she supposedly hurt. That's who I think he did it. Or the producers. But I really think it's the people at that town. Maybe it has something to do with her old life in New Kelp City. Maybe Knew she it. crossed someone and they've been plotting their revenge ever since. But I've looked in every single frame of New Kelp City and there is nothing connecting it back to the prison. I've looked literally everywhere and there's not a single person from the city that has anything to do with Mrs. Puff. Or is there? Well, I mean, maybe except for the literal warden of the prison she's being kept in. He may be hiding slightly off screen, but that is clearly the same warden of the Bikini Bottom prison. And this isn't some random background character that the show reuses all the time, he is a very distinct character. You can call me out on the Squilliam video all you want, but not this time. But wait a second, wait a second. If the warden was originally from New Kelp City, then he'd probably know about Mrs. Puff's dark past and her true identity. So why hasn't he exposed her? He's just kept quiet about the fact that one of his inmates is living a completely false identity. She'd probably even get more prison time when they find out who she really is, so why hasn't he said anything? This is where things get very interesting. So, we know Mrs. Puff prematurely gave a student at her original boating school a license, and that mm -hmm. led to them causing chaos and destruction. Maybe this student accidentally did something terrible to the warden, and he's blamed Mrs. Puff ever since. Whatever yeah. happened was so terrible that it caused him to move to Bikini Bottom and get a job as the warden of the town's prison. And to his surprise, he finds out that one of his inmates is actually the person he blames for that terrible thing happening. This works out perfectly for him. He can finally get his revenge on Mrs. Puff by making her life miserable. All he has to do is reveal her dark secret and she'll be stuck in jail for much longer. Except for one small issue with his plan. Yeah. Mrs. Puff actually likes being in prison. One day down, 2,528 to go. Oh, that's just shy of four years without SpongeBob. I'm going to enjoy this. So. Yeah, and they can. Uh, hmm. Hmm. He comes up with a new plan. Keep Mrs. Puff's secret and let her out of prison early, but only under the condition that she has to teach Spongebob. He's literally turning her normal life into a prison. And he makes sure going back to prison to avoid Spongebob isn't even an option for her anymore, because he'll make sure that Spongebob is always in there with her. And he's not gonna let her escape and start a new life like she did in New Kelp City. He makes sure to give her an ankle bracelet that doesn't let her leave Bikini Bottom. I can't even leave town without violating my parole. He is the master mind who's been controlling everything this entire time. But guess what? His insidious plan doesn't even end there. This is not the first time we've seen the Warden character. We first see him in Season 4, Episode 2, Crabs vs. Plankton. In this episode, Plankton slips on some water in the Krusty Krab and decides to sue Mr. Krabs for everything he owns. And then guess who shows up out of nowhere and offers to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer? What I really need is a good lawyer. Hello, did somebody say lawyer? Richard A. Bottom feeder, attorney at law. I couldn't help but notice that despicable display. Richard A. Bottom Feeder. The warden of the Bikini Bottom prison is also apparently a lawyer? That's mm -hmm. kind of strange. Those both sound like major careers. You usually wouldn't imagine someone being both. Then he says he'll be Mr. Krabs' lawyer completely free of charge. So, uh, how much is this gonna cost me? Actually, I won't charge a dime unless we win. 
Well, that's awfully generous of you, Richard. He seems very confident that he can win the case, but right before he goes to court, he slips on some water and says SpongeBob will have to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer now. Oh, this is gonna be a slam <laughs> Oh no! Mr. Krabs' lawyer, speak to me! Wrapped with pain, can't move. Looks like you're gonna have to handle this one, son. He tells SpongeBob that he has to represent Mr. Krabs, even though he himself called SpongeBob a liability. Actually, SpongeBob, we won't be needing any testimony from you. Why, you'd be more of a, uh... <laughs> of a liability than an asset. But it's okay, because apparently all Spongebob needs to win is inside of Richard's briefcase. Everything you need to win <laughs> is in this here case. But this nigga was clearly lying. <laughs> really? Everything? Except when Spongebob gets to court, he realizes that Richard never gave him the combination to the case. It's, uh, all in here. Really? Yep, right in here. Is there a problem? Uh, your lawyer didn't give me the combination. Either Richard A. Bottom Feeder is the worst lawyer in history, or this is all part of his elaborate plan to ruin Mrs. Puff's life. Here's what I think happened. First, he finds out that Mr. Krabs is being sued, and he wants to ensure that Mr. Krabs loses the case because he wants to destroy any chance Mrs. Puff has at finding love. So he pretends to be a lawyer, even offering his services for free, something Mr. Krabs can't resist. He makes Mr. Krabs feel confident that they're gonna win the case, and then at the last second, he pretends to get into an accident so he can't can't represent Mr. Krabs. Instead of finding a real lawyer to replace him, he tells the most incompetent person for the job, SpongeBob, that he has to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer. And he gives him a case that allegedly has all the answers in it without actually giving SpongeBob the combination, setting him up for a total failure in court. Richard A. Bottom Feeder refuses to let anyone get close to Mrs. Puff. Not Dorsal Dan, and not Mr. Krabs. This guy has squillium levels of hate for Mrs. Puff. But why? What exactly did her previous student do that warrants this much torture? It can't be something as simple as him or his property getting damaged. It has to be something life-changing. Something like losing a loved one because of the student's reckless driving. And I think the show gives us one last hint about who this might have been. All the pictures of Mrs. Puff's house are very meaningful to her. She's got photos of Mr. Krabs, her pet snail, and of course those infinitely looping photos that told us so much about her mental state. But there is one more photo in this house that might be the key to this entire conspiracy. In season 12, episode 14, Plankton's Old Chum, we see a photo of someone we've never seen before on Mrs. Puff's wall. There's some surprising similarities between this character and Richard. The green color, the red bow tie, the overall fancy, serious appearance. It clearly isn't the same person, but maybe this is someone related to Richard. Like a father, a son, or a brother that Mrs. Puff's former student killed. And the reason she keeps a photo of him up is to have a permanent reminder to never make the same mistake of giving someone a license who doesn't deserve it. Mrs. Puff is a boating school teacher who once made a terrible mistake that led to the loss of her business, identity, sanity, and any chance at finding happiness. I like to think that there used to be a time when she was happy, back when her husband was still alive. If only he was still around today, maybe she wouldn't have to face all of this on her own. Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Is what I would say if I was done, except her husband is still alive! Woo! Let's do this! In the Spongebob movie, what? Spongebob and Patrick travel to a gift shop named Shell City that's full of dead fish turned into knickknacks and ornaments. Except they end up setting off the smoke detector, which activates the sprinkler system and brings all the dead fish back to life, including a very familiar looking puffer fish hanging from the ceiling. Mr. Puff is alive. Well, wait a second, if he's alive and he escaped, then why hasn't he gone back to Mrs. Puff? Why is she still alone? Because remember, she ran away from their home in New Kelp City and started a new identity. So sadly, Mr. Puff has no way of finding her. The tragedy of Mrs. Puff's story is that her happiness is just a city away, but she can never even leave town because that would violate her parole. Richard A. Bottom Feeder probably even knows her husband is alive and is making sure they're never reunited. As the name says, Richard really is a bottom feeder. Wow. This video took a ton of time and effort to do all the research for, so I really hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching, and thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this theory. Go to NordVPN. That is crazy! Holy shit, that's crazy as fuck! I was that expected it! What the fuck? <laughs> I know, I know, I said to defend all people, but I was not expecting that. that. That threw me for a loop and a half. Oh my God. Do I think Mrs. Puff is guilty? 
No. I think that I think I think she I think Ah, uh, I gotta think about this theory. Ah, uh, snap. I just okay, I'll give you my final thoughts when I get back, because I gotta go pick up my baby cousin from school. And then I'll give final thoughts and then I'll be done. Got a kingdom and you never had a place in it No nah, man, rain with the rage of this Fuck a train and all cause I'm a sad you prince Goddamn, this is a royalty check If you see me rolling, avoiding this best If your life